Howdy folks, uh, Michelle Valancourt here. Um, doing a quick video on my greenhouse rocket mass heater project, sort of a little update. Uh, shout out to the uh, rocket mass heater uh, Facebook group, uh, who I mentioned I would do this video for. So, uh, real quick look around. Um, greenhouse, real straightforward stuff, backs onto our chicken coop, that's the egg doors there. You can see the uh, chicken yard out that way. And there's one of the roosters saying hello. Um, and so uh, it's about 24 by 12, uh, 24 by 10, actually, yeah, it's 24 by 10 uh, for the inside measurements. And, and of course, uh, this over here is my rocket mass heater. I'll talk about the, uh, the trench here in the foreground in just one second. Still a work in progress, so I get you to bear with me. So uh, pretty straightforward stuff. It's uh, cobbed in. Uh, that's an 8-inch uh, system. It's uh, fire brick from start to finish, so I spent a little bit of money, and um, so of course the, that's your the feed tube, burn tube right there, and then you've got the uh, the barrel. Get away from the glare here a little bit, so it's easy to see. Um, so uh, I'll publish measurements uh, with the Facebook page, but um, it's uh, a fairly hefty piece of work. Um, I think the the vertical is four is uh, four is over 32 inches. I think it's a 35, 34, 35 inch, um, and then so uh, that gives about an inch clearance on the inside of the barrel. Um, so the whole thing is below grade, and the barrel is one row of bricks higher than the the, the top of the uh, of the burn tunnel. So that gives me the extra long height. I uh, published another test video earlier um, talking about the uh, what I was able to achieve. Before I got it cobbed up, you can see the cobs on it. Um, but uh, before I cobbed it up, it still was leaking all over the place in terms of gas flow. And uh, so needed to be able to uh, get it cobbed up. Last test run, um, just using fist size, you know, a couple of fist size bundles of twigs, not basically just dead silver fall off the local trees. Um, ran it for a couple hours, yeah, almost an hour and a half. Um, at uh, over 500 bar uh, degrees on the uh, the top of the barrel, which is plenty what for, uh, warm for what I want to do. Um, here you can see I got a trench with some gravel in it and a couple of halves of barrels. And uh, the idea is that if you take a look down here, you'll see that there's a piece of stovepipe right there that comes out of the cob and goes into that barrel. And there's another piece of stovepipe here, not yet fixed in, but it will be. So what's going to wind up happening is that there's going to be a baffle in here that separates the left and right hand sides of the barrel. And then this entire trench is going to be covered in these barrels all the way down to the end um, with a set of baffling right down the middle made out of some old ventilation ducting. And then the baffle will run to about this far. So this end here is going to be open. So hot gases will travel down this side of the trench, covered in these barrels over this gravel, around the end of the baffle, and then back up. And then here, you can see this other piece of pipe. That's going to be tucked in here. There'll be a, an L in the baffling. So that will direct the gases out that piece of pipe. Um, this will be connected here. I'll go to an elbow, up. And then this piece of glass is actually going to have to get replaced with a piece of uh, plywood. There'll be a thimble, and I'll just go straight out it. The fresh air intake and the uh, and the chimney will be side by side. So that's the way it's going to work. On top of the barrel, um, I'm going to uh, cast a piece of concrete that's going to be just the inside diameter measurement of the barrel head. It's going to have um, a copper coil in it, and then quick releases on the outside of it. So you can just snap those on, and the idea is to push water through that um, the concrete will heat up uh, off the contact with the barrel head. That will uh, provide some thermal buffering from the copper pipe, so it'll be fairly hard to melt the copper pipe. And then we'll run water through the copper pipe, and that water will be used. Eventually, on this side, will be some IBC toads building an aquaponic system, and so I'm going to run hot water ho hose, essentially, from the top of the barrel up across this strut and down into my aquaponic system, which is going to be over here, as I say. And um, that's going to be 300 gallons of water, uh, 300 to 400 gallons. So if we can bring, you know, 400 gallons of water up 10 degrees Celsius, 
Um, that's an awful lot of heat energy that will be stored in the greenhouse and used to uh, warm the air inside the greenhouse. The waste heat from this system, of course, goes into the barrel structure, and that's going to heat the rocks underneath. Uh, the moisture uh, in the exhaust will likely just soak down through the gravel and into the clay below it. Um, and then um, the heat, of course, the reason I've gone with these barrels as opposed to pipe is because I want as much surface area exposed for heat transfer. So I let the uh, exhaust gases get good and big, lots of surface area on each side of the pipe, you know, the, the half barrel, sorry. Um, and though that is going to put an awful lot of heat into the ground. And so if the floor of the greenhouse never drops below freezing, uh, the air in the greenhouse should never drop below freezing. And uh, around here, I'm in Zone 5, uh, Prince Edward Island in Canada. We have days that drop well below zero Fahrenheit. Um, I think last winter we got down to, yeah, I think we had a, uh, we had at least one minus 40 centigrade day. Centigrade day. Um, that's brutal coal. Um, so, yeah, and, uh, of course, any waste heat from the uh, greenhouse, um, it'll, we're going to rig up a baffle system so that we can just pop that open and flood warm air into the greenhouse on those days when I need to... When things are in here is a little too hot, and so we won't waste heat. On the other hand, if the chicken hot's plenty, if the, sorry, the chicken coop is plenty warm, a little cool in here, we can open those battle, baffles, let some of the heat come back into the greenhouse. I apologize for the autofocusing issues that are happening. I'm using my uh, tablet to film this. Um, my video camera is misbehaving today and won't start up. Uh, I've just had no end of a spat with electronic issues for the past couple months. So uh, my tablet seems to be doing okay today. So again, that's roughly what it looks like. Uh, there's the heat trench, uh, you know, 24 inches by 12 inches-ish, um, you know, before the gravel. The gravel sits about two, about, uh, uh, two inches, 50 mils deep, just to give you an idea. And uh, so there we are. And so that's right by the, uh, the entrance to the greenhouse when you come in. There's the, uh, the door frame. So it'll be really easy to, to bring material in, and uh, if I want, I can use this as a way to get cool air, you know, just a little prop it open, a little air down along the floor to scoop cool air straight into the maw of the, uh, of the rocket stove. There you are, folks. Um, I'll probably, I'll will, not probably, but I will post a couple more videos um, once uh, this thing's closed up a little bit more and uh, looking a little bit more like a project in progress. Um, for sure, I'll post a at least one video um, once the whole thing is closed up um, and we've got the pipe work run out through the uh, that window behind the uh, the barrel head and are just burning at temperature just I want to see exactly what kind of temperatures we can get at the barrel head when it's actually all plumbed together alright folks thanks very much appreciate you watching Michelle Valancourt signing off